In today's episode, we answer the question, is berberine nature's ozempic? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the inside. Hello and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. My name is Alex Bush. I am your host for today's episode. I normally have this beautiful, blonde, curly-haired girl sitting to my right, but today is my first solo podcast. To be honest with you, I'm a little nervous. Um, We're almost 150 episodes in, and this is the first one I have done by my lonesome. I normally lean into that beautiful, blonde, curly-haired girl to save me in moments that I don't know exactly what I want to say, but today, I'm by myself. But bear with me, because I think today's episode is going to be a great one. Today's episode is going to be coming from a question I got from my client, Courtney. She had something come up on her TikTok feed that has just been flooding it recently, and it has been nature's Ozempic berberine. And today we're going to answer that question. And I'll tell you guys this, that I am not huge on the talk tick. I do not spend a whole lot of time rummaging on that feed very often to see what's going on in the fitness community over there. So if you guys ever have any questions when it comes to things you see on Instagram or TikTok or any of your social media platforms, go ahead and drop it in the comments or we'll have a sheet in the comments for you to leave those questions and we will address them here on the podcast in a longer format. Now, for us to be able to answer the question of, is berberine nature's ozempic? I think that it's important to define what berberine is and understand the effects and benefits, as well as understanding what ozempic, or more specifically, semiglutide, is going to do for our body. Let's get started with berberine. To define berberine, it is a naturally occurring alkaloid found in a handful of different plants. It is an herbal supplement that has been around for a very long time, and to my knowledge, it got started in Chinese medicine to treat diarrhea. So if you wanted a fun fact, there you go for today's episode. There are a number of benefits that berberine is going to have on our body, and the first one is going to be activating an enzyme called AMPK. For our reference point today, I would like to call AMPK as the master metabolic regulator inside the cell. And what that does is it's going to burn stored body fat, it's going to burn glucose or stored carbohydrates to increase energy expenditure. It is also going to improve lipid metabolization. When the enzyme AMPK is ramped up and it's burning through those carbohydrates and stored fats, It's going to signal to the body of like, hey, we're over here, we need more resources. And so the body is going to shuttle more carbohydrates towards the cell, and that's going to trigger a greater uptake of glycogen. And so you're going to have less carbohydrates being circulated subcutaneously and now being pushed inside the cell because AMPK is functioning at a higher rate or overall just better. And by improving the uptake of carbohydrates, this is going to improve overall blood sugar levels. And this takes me into the second benefit that we see with berberine supplementation, is that you're going to see an improvement in overall insulin sensitivity. Now, with insulin, this is going to be a hormone that is going to be important for blood sugar regulation. And if we are more sensitive to insulin, we have a greater ability to absorb nutrients, just as we talked about with that glycogen uptake into the cell. And so that means we will have better utilization of those carbohydrates that we're taking in, and they will be easier to shuttle into the cell and into the muscle belly where we want them to be for us to have better training output and overall energy production. Then by having the upregulation of AMPK, as well as the improvements in overall insulin sensitivity, we're going to see a reduction in gluconeogenesis. What a word. Gluconeogenesis is the process by the liver that is going to produce sugar or glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. Think amino acids, the broken down form of the proteins that you're consuming. By reducing this process, it is going to decrease the sugars that are traveling subcutaneously in the body, which is also going to positively impact blood sugar levels. 
berberine is also going to increase the expression of GLP-1. Now, a little bit of foreshadowing, this is going to be the main comparison point to what ozempic or semaglutide is going to do. GLP-1 is a hormone that is secreted in the small intestine in response to food, signaling to the body that we are full and that we are satiated. And so this is very important when we talk about appetite control. And there's going to be a significant difference between what semaglutide does as well as or compared to berberine. The next benefit that we see through research is that berberine is going to positively impact the gut microbiota. Berberine has shown many antimicrobial effects and is positive for the gut microbiome or the gut bacteria as a whole. The final two benefits that I found in my research that berberine carries are going to be anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Inflammation and oxidative stress are two things that are far too present in many individuals' lives. And so having supplementation that is going to support those levels or bringing those levels down, I should say, is going to be a helpful hand, not only for individuals who are wanting to better utilize the carbohydrates that they're consuming, but just for overall general health. Now, as you may be thinking, that is a ton of benefits for one product to be able to act upon the body. And I agree with you. I think that a lot of the benefits are going to be stemming from more of a trickle-down effect of one thing being a positive action on the cell and then that causing a greater impact down the chain as the body continues to work. And so I do believe this product, as it's been on the market for a very long time, it's been in the supplement industry for as long as I can remember, I think that this is a product that shows great efficacy. There's still more research that needs to be done on the product itself to continue to strengthen its overall efficacy, but I do believe that this product shows great promise. I will later talk about how you can utilize berberine and the dosages that are going to be best for you if you're wanting to reap the benefits that we talked about here today. But now I want to get into defining Ozempic and better yet, semaglutide. I'm going to just call it semaglutide for the remainder of this podcast because that's what it really is. You have Wagovi as well and um, with the Ozempic. Those are the two main options that you see within the, the world of, of medicine, if you will. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. So what in the world is this miracle weight loss drug? Because I feel like that is how most people view this. Semaglutide is going to be a GLP-1 mimetic. And as we talked about earlier, GLP-1 is a hormone that is going to be acting upon the gut lining as well as the brain and signaling to them of, yo, we are full and satiated. GLP-1 is also going to secrete another hormone called incretin. Incretin is a natural hormone that is going to slow the gastric emptying of the stomach, and this is going to delay the desire to eat again because you're not breaking down the foods as quickly as you naturally would be with the natural levels of incretin in your stomach. Now, you may be asking the question of, why don't we just inject a bunch of GLP-1 into our bloodstream and we'll just never be hungry and all be skinny and look awesome? It's a little bit more difficult than that. And if we just were to intake GLP-1, the half-life is significantly shorter. The thing that really separates semaglutide is that the GLP-1 itself is bound to amino acid chains. And this allows for the GLP-1 to work significantly longer, or the, the medication itself, I should say, work significantly longer than what just taking GLP-1 would. Because if you were to just take that, the half-life is much shorter and you would only have the benefit for a short period of time. Where with the medication of semaglutide, it's really a one time a week injection is my understanding. I am not a doctor. I am not um, telling you that you should take this medication. This is my understanding of how the medication works and how it is prescribed. Speak with your physician if you are interested in utilizing the medication. 
The two benefits from the medication are going to be a decrease in gastric emptying, so you're going to stay satiated for a longer period, as well as working as a very strong appetite suppressant with the increase in GLP-1. What we have seen in the clinical trials for this medication is that it is great for weight loss. The average weight loss of obese individuals during those trials lost 15% of their body mass and were able to keep that weight off as long as they continued to take the medication. I've heard this stated by many medical professionals in the field that this is the best weight loss intervention that they have seen hit the market. But I want to take some time and go back to something I had stated within the clinical trials. They lost 15% of their body mass and were able to keep it off as long as they stayed on the medication. What happens once that medication is removed? Have the habits and lifestyle factors been improved enough and they've changed their behaviors enough to actually retain the fat loss that they were able to have with the medication in place, or as soon as that medication is pulled out, they go back to exactly how they were eating before, and their habits and behaviors are the exact same. Because that's where I personally would like to see the better utilization of this medication moving forward. I would like to see more nutritional coaching, more lifestyle coaching with those individuals who are utilizing the medication so that they can improve their habits and improve their behavior while making or while taking the medication and be able to move forward and keep that weight off and continue to improve because of their habits and behaviors improving as well and not just having the medication in place serving almost as a band-aid for the interim time to only go back to what they used to do prior. Because I believe that habits and behavior are the most difficult part of really getting into your fitness or overall health journey. Because changing what you do in the environment is already difficult enough and really pushing yourself to be uncomfortable, to do things that are hard and to do things that you probably don't wanna do more often than you do want to do, especially early on, is very, very challenging. So in a perfect world to me, semiglutide is used as a springboard to get those individuals who are carrying excess levels of body fat to start to see progress and stop banging their head up against the wall because they're trying and trying to implement different things and having the tools in place. Use the medication as that springboard while also getting the nutritional coaching and also improving their overall habits and lifestyle factors that allow for them to see a better health for themselves moving forward. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Now that we have a clear understanding of what berberine and semaglutide are going to be, we can answer the question, is berberine nature's ozempic? In short, no, they're both going to have an impact on GLP-1 levels, weight management, and blood sugar control, but to compare the two is like heading to the same destination and saying, I'm going to take a bike or I'm going to take an airplane. It's not the same. And the last thing that I will say with semaglutide is that for the individual who is obese or does have type two diabetes, I think that this medication is something that you should have a conversation with your caregiver about and see if this would be something that's useful for you and your treatment. For the individual who is wanting to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds, I don't believe that this is a medication that is meant for you. Although it will make your process easier, it is not something that is going to be of benefit to you because it is being used as a crutch and not driving home the aspects that I talked about earlier and really focusing on the overall behavior and habits and having a lifestyle that is going to keep the weight off that you're wanting to lose. Because if you utilize the medication to lose that 10, 15, 20 pounds and you take that medication out, but you change nothing, as I talked about, it's just gonna come back and it's probably gonna come back in bunches and maybe even more. And so focusing on getting real coaching and getting things that are tailored to you is the thing that you need to be focusing on rather than having this miracle drug come into your life. 
For those of you who are wanting to add berberine into your supplementation, here are the dosages that we see within research as well as my recommendations. 900 to 2,000 milligrams daily is what clinically they are seeing within the research that has been completed, and then splitting that dosage up into three to four servings. Now, you can take this before a meal or with a meal. I would recommend prior to a meal, about 20 to 30 minutes prior to help with the control of blood sugars as well as the partitioning of the carbohydrates that you're consuming. Now, if you're going to be taking a higher dosage, taking the full 900 uh, milligrams or over a gram in one singular sitting, not what I would advise, but if you wanted to go that route, you may experience a little bit of stomach discomfort, a little bit of loose stools, and I would just recommend to split the dosages up prior to meals as small as you can to reap the benefits as well as have the lowest possibility of uh, any of that stomach discomfort that would come from the higher dosages consumed. Now, if you would like to support me and, you know, you've listened to the podcast up until this point, and I've worked very hard on the show notes and going through all the research, collecting all the research for you, it would mean a lot for me, for you to support me. It would mean a lot to me for you to support me. Revive is my supplement sponsor, and they have a product called Glucose. Glucose is going to have 1.5 grams of berberine in the full dosage. Now, what I recommend to my clients is that the capsule size for the serving size is going to be six. And so I have them take two capsules three times daily, 20 to 30 minutes prior to their meal. And the beautiful thing with Revive Glucose is that it's not only going to have berberine, but it is also going to have other ingredients that are going to help partition nutrients as well as improve your overall digestion of the foods that you're consuming. That product will be linked in the show notes or in the description of the video below. You can use code BUSH to save you some money. That concludes my first ever solo podcast. If you guys loved it, leave a comment below. If you didn't like it, leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video. We appreciate you guys abundantly and we'll catch you in the next episode.